Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. In this video, I'm going to refurbish a battery for my TRC-372 military radio. Now, I've already removed the old uh, cadmium nickel cells. There are 10 of them, and that's pretty darn heavy. And the cells are dead, so uh, not much I can do with those. Now, I already put some batteries in there. And I'm going to show you how I did that. And of course, I still have to do all the uh, wiring inside. The batteries I got are Litokala 7 amp hour batteries, uh, lithium ion phosphate. Uh, they are 3.2 volts. Uh, maximum charge voltage is 3.65. So you have basically a 14.6 volt uh, total uh, using four cells. The advantage of these batteries is that they can be charged many times, like 2,000 cycles, and that's amazing. They also are presumably more stable than uh, LiPo or uh, lithium-ion batteries. Now, a word of caution about these batteries, they are very cheap. I got them from AliExpress, and uh, I'm not quite sure <laughs> it's the, it was the right thing to get. Uh, I would have preferred headway cells. Uh, they have cells like that are 10 amp hours. These are again very cheap, that's why I got them, but uh, we'll see how they perform. And I'm going to use four of them, which gives again 14.6 volt, great voltage for many types of radios. Minimum voltage is 2.5 volts, and that's pretty nice too. I found these uh, battery uh, management system boards on eBay. Those of course are specific to uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries and they will ensure that the batteries are not overcharged or over discharged. You can see on the schematic here that uh, they are actually really easy to connect. The charger I got also from eBay uh, is a, uh, again 14.6 volts, 2 amps and uh, you know very simple charger. Uh, not to be confused with the uh, chargers for lithium ion because then you, <laughs> you risk uh, damaging your batteries. You can see my uh, lithium ion charger here and it's 16.8 volts. So again, uh, not to be used with these batteries. I put a washer inside for the uh, DC plug, uh, epoxied it. You guys know I'm a little bit of a glue fanatic. <laughs> so I'm going to hot glue this to the case. I'm going to uh, solder the pads together here. It's very easy. Takes to the solder very easily. I'm going to have to bridge the two at the end here with a piece of wire. So we'll just put some solder on them. Okay, so we have our plus here, connection here between the two cells here, and we have our minus right there. Now I have to prepare and connect uh, five wires. One, two, three, four, five, to go to the BMS so that it can balance the cells. There is a bar here that comes on top of the case and has a fuse holder. So, you know, I'm thinking, uh, why not use a fuse? Uh, that's always a good precaution. So I'm going to connect that to the uh, BMS on one end and that uh, the other end will go to the uh, connector, power connector of the radio. I also have to connect to the BMS, which I think is going to go there, uh, to the charging port. And uh, of course, I want to use the switch also to turn the radio on. This pad has never been used and it's, uh, it's really old. I should have scratched it with uh, sandpaper. By the way, when you solder the uh, center pin of the uh, DC connector, it's a very good idea to plug in, well, a DC plug actually, uh, in the connector because sometimes the plastic softens and the center pin is going to go uh, off center basically. So always put a plug in your connector before you solder. Now I'm soldering the uh, common minus wire on the power connector. Now note that these wires, plus and minus, go to the uh, BMS board. They don't go to the batteries. 
everything goes through the board. Here's the last wire. Um, there's no point in me showing you every single solder joint, but here's the last one. I'm going to uh, hot glue the BMS now onto the pack, just because I don't want it to move around while I'm soldering, so that'll be easier. Not too close to the connector, of course, so I don't want to have a short. All right, from here it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, B minus here goes to the minus of the pack. Trying not to melt something. B1 goes to here, first junction. B2 goes to the middle of the pack, second junction. I'm just adding some solder here, I just did it. B3 goes to the third junction. And of course B plus goes to the plus. Whoa, what was that? Oh, it touched the body, the body of the cell. Jeez, so apparently the uh, insulation is, is very thin. So uh, I put some duct tape there. Uh, but I'm gonna have to check the other cells and maybe put some duct tape under. So it is basically finished and I checked it works. So I'm going to uh, hot glue those tabs just to make sure they don't move. I don't want any short and that's the danger with these batteries. Uh, you want to make absolutely sure that you don't have a short anywhere. Uh, <laughs> they could set your house on fire. Here is the uh, finished product and uh, I have to say it isn't half bad. Uh, the hot glue looks a bit messy, but uh, it's a good insulator and it's pretty strong. So I made sure that there are no shorts. Once again, uh, I put a spare fuse inside the case and it's ready to go. Let's see if it works. Bingo. <laughs> I also made myself a battery pack using the same cells. Now, is it worth it to get cheap cells like the Lito Kala? Time will tell. You probably want to get something better, but we'll see how they perform uh, in the radio and in this pack. Now, the BMS I used seems to uh, not charge the batteries above 13.6 volts. And that's not quite enough because they can go up to 14.6. So it's fine with me, but I'm probably losing some capacity. Now, they're presumably 7 amp hours, but I saw on different uh, YouTube videos that they're more around 6 amp hours, which is plenty. I mean, I don't find that to be a fault. But, you know, sometimes when you get the cheap stuff, uh, you buy twice. And it's not always the case, but it's the case often enough that uh, it's probably better to buy the more expensive cells. And, you know, and that goes for pretty much everything. Have a good one.